Hi people, moin and waving back here again as always and as usual. Yeah, I'll be covering the Goerek spirit Rome uh, today. Rome, the 40th spirit is Rome. He is a great earl and appeared at first in the form of a crow. But after the command of the exorcist, he put it on human shape. His office is to steal treasures out of king's houses and to carry it whither he is commanded and to destroy cities and dignities of men and to tell all things past and what is and what will be and to cause love between friends and foes. He was of the order of thrones. He governed the religions of spirits, etc. So yeah, let's dive right in. Uh, the description in the Goetia is incorrect. I repeat, it's incorrect. No, not correct at all. Rome specializes, Rome specializes in, um, specifically in, um, herbal knowledge in relation to nature specifically. So, just as I said, okay, think of anything relating unto nature and specifically, for example, specializing in botany or herbology or similar. In any case, anything where nature and the herbs that can be extracted, plants and roots and herbs from nature can be extracted um, at devastatingly accurate levels to the point where um, you can just bluntly put outright become rich or at the very least well off or uh, carve out a great career, a marvelous career for yourself um, in the aforementioned practices like botany, like I said, etc. or herbology. So yeah, in any case, Rome's specialty is dealing with, um, with nature and herbology and extracting herbs from nature, you name it, anything relating unto that. And let me see, and for the rest, yeah, um, again, I need to lay emphasis on this, uh, which is that um, he will work from an intellectual perspective. So you work with him, he'll bestow his skill set and specialty upon you, which is the aforementioned in conjunction with intelligence. So he'll make you like an herbology specialist, someone that does what he does or she does he, uh, with a high level of intellectual into intellectuality or just plain intellect about you um, and the aim will be profit as in financial profit um, let me see and for the rest the Rome oh yeah and therefore Rome unsurprisingly corresponds to the planet Mercury he's mercurial strong mercurial um, mercurial properties specifically the zodiac sign virgo is quite strong within rome uh, or aligns with rome and to a lesser extent venusian properties specifically libra zodiacally speaking uh, now speaking of libra um, there are drawbacks to working with rome or better said drawback singular drawback which is that um, when working with rome and he bestows his energy upon you that will lead to the aforementioned benefits the drawback is, as is the case by default with benefits, you know, just overall across the board from a neutral perspective, is that um, in, this, <coughs> in this context, Rome will make you emotionally inhibited. So you'll become like an emotional introvert or just plain introvert. You'll be someone that keeps to himself and doesn't really feel like uh, himself or herself and doesn't really feel like, like either establishing relationships with others, whether it be romantically or otherwise, so friendship wise or anything like that, or the relationships you already had will deteriorate to the point where they become non-existent. So if you had any friends, like serious friends that you were on good terms with and that you confided in and whatnot, Rome will make it so that you'll all of a sudden start to withdraw yourself and you'll become unavailable to the point where your friends are just going to abandon you because all of a sudden it seems like you've distanced yourself from the friend group or from them. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. And don't let alone making any new friends or anything like that. I'm not talking about friends in a childhood-like manner. I'm talking about relationships overall. So that includes business relationships as well. So bluntly put, Rome will turn you into an herbological professor that specializes in just that herbology and finding high quality herbs in nature like ultra scientist but at the same time 
you know, which is quite common with more than a few of these kind of guys that you will essentially exclude others from your lives. Your life will be about work and the benefits you take from work, but no real social life like uh, getting married, having children and stuff like that. Okay. Or if you do, then it's more purely based on professionalism or work related or, um, or some other exclusionary factor, but it's not, um, it, it's definitely not due to a strong bond that you have with the aforementioned people. And this includes business relationships as well. You know, we know, you know what I'm talking about. We've all seen like the, um, the professor type that essentially like has no life, you know, because it seems like the guy is so like wrapped up in his own head and his own mind that he like, he has like no social contacts, no friends, no real social life, nothing. Life is purely about work for him. The guy is like ultra giga scientist type. Yeah, that's uh, the kind of person Rome will turn you into. But uh, the benefits in terms of the aforementioned, oh boy, are um, are extraordinary. Like a nine on a scale of zero to ten, an eight or a nine. Um, let me see what else I had to see. <laughs> Oh yeah, where it's mentioned what kind of spirit that Rome is. Rome is indeed a fallen angel. It says here in the description that he was of the order of thrones. He is, but applicable to human terms, he is of the order of powers. So again, I already said um, in the past, in the recent past, if I'm not mistaken. Either way, I've already, I've already brought it to people's attention that everything, including the angelic orders, are like intertwined. They're all connected to each other. The entire world, this existence as a whole, is connected to itself. So yeah, in theory, he is from the Order of Thrones. He is just playing from the Order of Thrones, but more practically applicable to human comprehension, he is or aligns more with the Order of Powers. Um, so hence that, and in terms of his appearance, um, um, where it says that he um, he takes on the form of a crow, but after command of the exorcist, he puts on human shape. Rome looks like a guy, a human guy that's naked, uh, with slight, with minor, not slight, with minor feminine features. That's due to the Venusian like influence, uh, the Venusian energy. And he um, he's surrounded by crows, like think of a handful of crows, like anywhere between two and like five crows, or ballpark number like under 10 in any case and they keep calling like like not constantly but semi-constantly they just call frequently you know yeah and they're all black yeah crows by default are black i don't think there's any other color crow i might be wrong but in any case yeah black crows um and um that descript that part of his description in the goetia is true at least okay the those parts so what kind of spirit he is, that he's a fallen angel and his appearance are correct, but not literally. They were like, were slightly off in a manner of speaking, but not literally, only figuratively. The reason for that is that, like I said, when I spoke to him, he was like, sometimes like only one crow appears and sometimes he just shows up as a human being without the crows. He just adjusts based on the operator or based on who's summoning him. Because he's thinking that, you know, he just adjusts for the sake of the operator that is summoning him convenience. The person that's summoning him, their convenience. If like someone summons him that's not really like fond of crows or, or birds by default or, or Rome can tell that, you know, it's going to be a bit like, it's going to startle them a bit or, or make them a bit skittish, then no. He just leaves the crows uh, behind in a manner of speaking. Uh, he showed me his wings as well. Um, I recognize it immediately that he was like a top tier, high tier angel, like yeah, typical thrones appearance, etc. Yeah, uh, white wings, big white wings that are quite um, thick to the point where it almost seems like they're from the material plane, with a um, a beige outline, the same color of uh, the zodiac sign Virgo. Think olive. Think olive brown, yeah that color with an outline it's quite nice because it reminded me of <laughs> it reminded me of um, a Hugo Boss shirt that I have specifically the color of the brown color that Hugo Boss t-shirts have the where the polo shirt has like an outline or any shirt has an outline 
around the collar and whatnot at the outer end edges or the tips. I told him it reminds me of that, and he was like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, the human, uh, the human uh, clothing brand, Hugo Boss, right? Yeah." Oh, let me see. If there was anything else? Oh, yeah. And last but not least, um, Rom also had a request. He also told me to tell people that he would appreciate people actually think twice and confirm for themselves that they're serious when summoning him. Otherwise, if someone that is just superficially wondering about him or similar is going to summon him, he might be reluctant to, um, to appear. He bluntly put, in my words, has no time for bullshitters. He's anything but the only spirit that has made such a statement, but I understand him, nevertheless. Um, oh yeah, and before I go, as I'm recording this, like I'm just briefly... My senses are telling me, in terms of what is mentioned in the Goetia, right? Um, that's simply a mixture of exaggeration to steal treasure out of king's houses and all of that stuff to destroy cities and dignities of men and to cause love and whatnot. That's just an exaggeration, honestly. They got their uh, stuff twisted when it comes to the, the divinations that they used or uh, the information source they used to to take care of things, they most likely got it in reverse. I repeat, they got it in reverse most likely, or um, and or they misread it in a, in some way somehow, and they ended up with what you see in the Kuwaitia, uh, or at the very least, and or the fact that they and or at the very least they um, they just exaggerated, obviously. Um, like more than a few other spirits from the Goetia. And let me see if there is anything else. Oh yeah, Rome said that he, um, he told me that I'm the only one that got it so, so devastatingly correct. He told me, you're the only one that's like so detailedly correct about me. Usually most of the people that have summoned me, they, uh, the people that have summoned me, usually they just ask me the stuff that is mentioned in the Goetia and I just help them out for the sake of helping them out and for the work and everything, it's not a big deal. And sometimes I get it right, sometimes I don't, you know, but I'm, but you're already aware of that, Master Moy. I was like, yeah, nothing I'm not aware of already. I said, even if you were to ask a spirit like Rome for anything, the default skill set and the high level of energy make it so that even if it's not a specialty, he might still be able to come through for you. But I already discussed what his specialties are and what he truly excels in life, truly, truly, really. That's all. Bye-bye.